God told us in the uh, 31st chapter, he said, I want you to write this song down. I want you to put it in the mouths of my children, meaning I want every child to hear this song because it is the song as we learned in Revelation 15 that those that overcome the beast, his mark, his system, his cronies, those that have the victory sing this song. And so far we have covered 15 verses and we found that God thought he warns us about the enemy whose spot is not as our spot, meaning they're children of Satan, the Kenite, as Jude chapter, verse uh, 12 stipulates. And um, here we come in and he called them Jeshurun. He said, I fix it up, I give you a lot of things, plenty of food, everything else. And then um, you kind of get to be a good time Charlie. Long as the good times are rolling, you forget about me. And that's where we pick it up today. And so the, to ensure that we complete the song, we're going to just get right to it. Remember again, these are words that God stated in, I believe it was the 19th verse of the last chapter. I'll check it out here. Well, I should have known I was right. The 19th verse of 31 will declare, I insist that they learn it. All right, so it's important that you at least have the flow. With that having been said, after God used this kind of mock name, it means the upright one or uh, supremely happy one. Good old time Charlie, let the good times roll. All right, verse 16, and it reads, They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, and uh, with abominations provoked they him to anger. God sends you the instructions of how to find peace of mind, happiness, and people like to just forget all about him and, and mess up, mess up royally. Why? They really think they're good. Hey, got it made, got it all figured out. Well, without Father, and as much as he's running the show, you're going to come up short every time in your life. You're not going to find peace of mind, though you may have good times for a while, but you see, what you don't want to forget is God that gave you the good times, meaning prosperity, and you'd better thank him for it and let him know you love him, or he's going to yank it right out from under you, just bang. Maybe like a depression, a recession, whatever the case might be. Verse 17, they sacrificed unto devils or idols, not to God, forgot him. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up from very close. They just make up things. Well, let's, let's have a religion of laughing. Let's have a religion of crying. Let's have a religion of weeping. Something new all the time, all right? Whom your fathers feared not. Why? We don't have to fear anything. We reverence God, and God takes care of us. He has everything. But these people that start new religions and oversimplify even that that they do have that is truth and stipulate many times, that's all you have to know. You don't have to study God's Word, especially the Old Testament where the main, some of the main warnings are. You can just scrap that and just listen to me. Uh, sometimes a man tells you to listen to him and forget God. You're a sucker. You're a sucker for a sham if you will go along with that, especially if some... Uh, individual tells you, you don't need to understand Revelation. That's, uh, Revelation, I don't care what language you place it in, means the unveiling or the uncovering. So, do you think God didn't know what he was doing, that he names it the uncovering and expect you to uncover it, see it, observe it, do it? Of course he did. Don't, don't let some individual make a fool out of you in the very eyes of God. Check them out. Make them stick to the word. If they don't stick to the word, get rid of them. You, you don't have a teacher of God's word. You've got a clown. Verse 18. Of the rock, and again, remember, rock in this uppercase is utilized five times, meaning grace, meaning salvation, basically, unmarried favor. Rock being our father. That begat thee, thou art unmindful. You forgot him and has forgotten God that formed thee. He, God created your soul, and it was your soul 
that he created. Why? Because he wanted uh, uh, children. He wanted you for his pleasure. And that is the purpose. And our father is a father of love. He loves his children. So needless to say, when they turn away from him or turn their back on him, that's being snobbed. He doesn't like it. And what's worse, 19, and when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of provoking, of the provoking of his sons and his, of his daughters. In other words, the um, product of their fruit or of their actions provoked God. It was their very deeds that provoked him. Now, it isn't difficult to please our Father. If you, you know, you might say, well, I really don't know the word that well. That's all right. If you're trying, he considers that as a whole, and he will help you as you gain knowledge and interest. You won't, you won't have trouble in your family that you can't handle. Everyone's going to have hardships at time, but the, the uh, su successful one knows how to handle trouble. Nip it in the bud. All right? Never let it uh, grow like a cancer into something that's unmanageable. Verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. This word froward here is one of the few places it's used in the stead of perverse. They pervert everything that I set before them. And, and any time that you utilize something that God has created outside of its natural order, that's perversion. And God certainly does not like that. Why? You're snubbing him, slamming him, and he considers it an abomination. And naturally, the prime seed every time of that is Satan himself trying to reason with some person to turn to perversion. And Satan is good at it. Uh, it'll be all right. Hey, you're a winner. You can handle it. Sure, go ahead. It'll be all right. Satan has a way of just really reasoning with that part of you that might tend to turn toward that type of forwardness. And I'll tell you something. That'll get you in trouble. That would, any time that you adulterate or pervert the natural order of things, it's going to bring disease and sickness. You can count on it. You're going to bring more trouble than you can shake a stick at. Verse 20, God, in other words, why? Because God doesn't like it. He's going to do something about it. He's not, he's going to see how far you will go and pretty soon he's going to put the brakes on you. 21, they have moved me to jealousy. He is a jealous God with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, their emptiness, empty-headed people, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And of course, in Amos chapter 6, verse 14, is where he says, I won't cleanse it anymore. I'm going to move this nation in, and it'll be there till the end. The word is wilderness, Arabah, which means neither night or day, but the braided one, to the close of the day. It, meaning what? Well, at the end times, it would, it would grow worse than it was at that time. And look around you, friends, so it is. Don't think that God isn't jealous, and don't think that God doesn't move to prevent perversiveness, prevent those that would drag down with them if they could, God's election. Verse 22, for a fire is kindled in mine anger, a fire is kindled in my nostrils, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundation of the mountains. Now that frightens many and they misplace it and you know fear comes real easy for one that is unlearned in God's word. You know in studying his word 
I'll give you a scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, tells you what part of the earth shall be burned with that fire. In the English, it is the word elements, but the Greek word, stachion, is uh, rudiments, which means I'm going to burn everything that is evil. Well, if, if you're serving him and you're not evil, it's not going to affect you. I don't care if you're standing in the very center of his wrath, it will not harm you. Why? He's not angry at you. He's angry at those that pervert, and he does something about it. He doesn't let it rest. Verse 23, I will heap mischief upon them. That's in the plural. I, again for emphasis, meaning God himself, I will spin mine arrows upon them. I'm going to see that they get what they've got coming to them for perverting my ways. What is he going to do about it? What is your sign to know he has? Well, listen, verse 24. They shall be burnt, translate that, wasted, with hunger and devoured with burning heat. In other words, that means... Uh, um, an irreversible fever, chills, wasting away with nothing, having no immune system to fight it, just finished, wasted around to the nothing that perversion is. Uh, I know that upsets some, but hey, I'm going to teach you the truth because I want to cease the perversion whereby people don't have to worry about this. It's the only cure is to rise above it because God promised it. It is there. It shall remain there. There will no cure be found for it other than doing it God's way, period. And with bitter destruction, I will also send the teeth of beast upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. What is the old serpent of the dust? Well, I think would think you would know. God cursed uh, the first prophecy of the Bible for uh, third Genesis, chapter 3 in the book of Genesis, uh, verse 15, where Eve was beguiled by the serpent. The, he promised the serpent that on the, the, his belly and the dust the rest of his lives, who is the serpent? Satan, of course. Documentation, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, or Revelation 20, verses 1 and 2. That old serpent, the devil, the dragon, whatever name you want to go, that's his name. Now, Satan will con you, use you, and destroy you if you listen to him. He will make you find excuses that everything is all right when it's exactly reverse and contrary, 180 degrees out of orbit compared to what God would have us do. And, you, hey, you don't have to listen to too many people to see that practice in session, alibying for... Uh, to make sin even seem holy, basically. Look out, friend. Don't buy into it. Unless you like burning fevers, a wasting away fever. Verse 25. The sword without... Now, now first let's determine what sword are we talking about. As... Christ's sword is his tongue in Revelation 1, 15, 16. Then, that is to say, the 15th or 16th verse of chapter 1 in the book of Revelations lets you know that God's word through the mouth of Christ is a two-edged sword that cuts both ways. This is Satan's sword. The sword without and terror within, right in your main chambers, no hiding place shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs, each of gray hair, which gray hair is supposed to symbolize wisdom. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't quite get around to it, though. What he's saying is the sword of the serpent and the poison of his venomous lies is going to deceive both the old, the young, and the in-between that have not studied God's word. He said, I'm going to send that curse upon them that they would believe a lie and be damned. You can read of this again in, sec uh, 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, um, as he says, if you want to believe a lie, I'll let you, and I will even send the damnation upon you for having wanted it. So you better stick to God's word. It's important. He doesn't like you chasing fairy tales. He doesn't like you being taken in by any whim of mankind and traditions of men that come along that make void God's word. That's why he wrote this song to you to prepare you mentally, spiritually, and even physically so that you couldn't be taken in by them. Let's continue on. Verse 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. In the older manuscripts, he asked the question in closing, where are they? In other words, if you don't believe it, look around and tell me where they are. They were to be as numerous as the sands of the sea and the stars of heaven. Where are they? And many would say, well, they're in Jerusalem. No, that's Judah. This is written to Israel. Where is the house of Israel? Not talking about the house of Judah. Well, I don't know. Then there's the proof God succeeded because most people don't know. Why? Haven't studied history along with the Word of God to know that the house of Israel was taken captive 600 B.C., 200 years before the house of Judah was, was taken by um, the Assyrian and later migrated north over the Caucasus Mountains and were later called Caucasians, Celts, uh, many other names they went by. Um, and Saxon, do you know what Saxon means? It means Isaac's sons. Right before their faces and they don't know it, that God has a purpose and a destiny for his children. And he said, sing this song to them. Make sure they know it. Why? Because only those that overcome, as it is written in Revelation chapter 15, that overcome the Antichrist, the beast system, will be those that understand the song of Moses, the song that God himself instructed in 3119 that you know that you have it in your mouth, meaning you could repeat it to spread the word of how is it that I overcome? Well, number one, you better not in the good times start chasing traditions of men or get in funny religions that differ from God's word, probably never have God's word read to you or taught you chapter by chapter and verse by verse until you don't know if you're on a funny farm or in a house of God. Why? Because you would be biblically illiterate if you weren't familiar with God's Word. It is essential that you understand this song of Moses. Again, Revelation chapter 15, verse 3 will document that for you right from the good old New Testament. This happens to be the song that we're teaching right here. I don't know. How are you doing? Do you like the sword of Satan? You can also read of this flood of lies he pulls out, uh, pours out on the young men, women, old, and everything alike, and the woman in Revelation chapter 12. After he's cast out upon the earth, that's what it's talking about. 26. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among them. And as I stated, in better manuscripts, ancient. Where are they? Question 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, and who's the enemy? The Kenite, of course. Their spot is not our spot. They're a crooked and perverse people. Lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. We did. This is Satan's own opinion. This is why Satan thinks he can win, quite frankly. Satan believes he can actually defeat God. And I'll tell you what, as easy as God's people are deceived, it, if it were not our father, Yahweh, he'd get away with it. If it were left up, understand what I said. I said if it were left up to the people, Satan would make it. But it isn't left up to the people. 
He said, I'm afraid that the enemy will think they've overcome completely and that it was not I who allowed them to gain that control. 28, for they are a nation void of counsel. All counsel comes from God. Without that, you got Zippo, friend. Neither is there any understanding in them. All wisdom comes from God. And you drive God out from your midst and put some funny little gods, little uh, flyaway doctors, and you're in trouble, friend, because God is against that. And I know I offend some, but I'd rather offend you than have you burn in hell by deception and being pulled away by Satan, by his lying tongue and the lies. Satan would rather work from pulpits than he would in any other place. That's why Jesus would warn you of all warnings in Mark 13. He didn't say, beware of witchcraft, beware of demons, beware of the devil. He said, beware of Christian preachers that come in my name claiming to be Christian. They're the ones that'll get you in trouble. Now, don't think I'm knocking Christianity. I'm just knocking those that like to play Christianity and not produce the fruit of God, which is to say, to teach the Word of God, which brings sanity into a family whereby they can withstand the storm. Shame on them. No understanding. Don't let the enemy pull you away. Stay in God's Word. Focus. Stay focused. It's so easy to pull away and play parties. Be careful. Verse 29. Oh, that they were wise. I'm sorry, they're not. They're stupid. That they understood this, that they would consider their latter end, meaning hell, if they don't change. Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? Well, I'll tell you what, those of you that remain can chase a thousand, chase two thousand, chase ten thousand, because God has given us the victory and the power over our enemies. But you have to understand the song of Moses and what it relates to before you have any right to even claim that power, which is the power that Christ has given us. He gave it to us. It's well written. Luke chapter 10, verse 18, 19. Read it for yourself. Verse 31. This is the reason. Listen carefully. For their rock, and I must call your attention to the lower case, their rock, who is their rock? Well, it's Satan, of course. I'll document it here in a moment. For their rock is not as our rock, uppercase, God, foundation, solid rock foundation. Even our enemies themselves being judged. Even, even the Kenites know that. Even the heathen know. Now, you might say, well, who is their rock? All right, I'm going to document it for you. It is only one. God named him. He called him the king of Tyrus. You will find it written in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. Now, I want to teach you how to become a Hebrew scholar. How to, I, now, I told you that Tyrus means rock, or I'm, I am now. How can you prove me wrong? It's real simple. All you have to do is acquire a strong concordance. You can get it through our library or you can, most bookstores, just be careful that you have a complete one. Don't get shortchanged in some Bible bookstore. And turn to the word Tyrus as it is used in Ezekiel 28 and you'll find it means rock, stone. Their rock is not our rock. He's a fake. Now, it's real easy. You know, how many teachers have you heard that have told you how to document and prove them wrong if they happen to be? Well, I do that to try to drive you into God's Word, whereby you gain the ability yourself to check out certain translations as to what the Word was in the original. Dr. Strong did a very good work. Don't settle for a young for the young. It's, it's really not going to do you that much good. I, I wouldn't allow one in my library. But you do need a strong. Said so a strong for the strong. But we're talking here about their rock 
is already sentenced to death. That's why he's called the son of perdition. Well, what does that mean? Well, a shame on you. Check perdition out in the Strong's Concordance as it is utilized in John chapter 17. And then you won't think it was Jude that they were talking about, but you'll know it, Satan. And uh, check it out as it, as it is utilized in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse uh, 3. And you'll find out that it means the son that has already been judged to perish. And the documentation for that is in the very chapter I gave you, Tyrus, chapter 28 of Ezekiel in the 19th verse. It states there that Satan will be turned to ashes from within forever and ever and ever. Never again will he be when that time comes. Why am I going to that extent? I want you to know the difference between our rock and their rock. He's a liar, and ours is the creator, a solid rock that you can stand on and not waver. If, if you stand on this word, remaining focused on it, no one can shake you. No one can cause you to doubt. Why? Because you have enough sense to go to the word and find out if they're speaking truth or not. Verse 32. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Do you know what happened there? Perversion, sodomy. Their grapes are grapes of gall, bitterness, and their clusters are bitter. And God send that burning fever in this generation. What is your vine? Have you ever read the New Testament? It's written, I, our Father is the vine and we are the branches. Christ is the vine. Verse 33. And I, I must add, I can't help it now that a second think it. Christ is the vine, we're the branches, and God does the pruning. I don't know, you ever been pruned right real close? Do you know what get prunes you know what gets pruned off of the vine? The little branch that doesn't produce fruit. Snip out of here. Think about it. How you doing, friend? Thirty-three. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom venom of asp, of the serpent, lies. Misleading people, false religions, people claiming to be Christian and never crack the Bible other than maybe one little tiny verse here or there, and then go off into good heavenly father only knows what to deceive the people or entertain them enough to get into their pocket. Now, I'm, I, you know, many might say, well, you're insulting churches. No, I'm not. I'm insulting people that play church. If you've got a good church, they won't be offended by this, by that statement. They'll be all with me. But if the shoe fits, wear it. Verse 34. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? That's the song, friend. Do you know he intended to do this? People don't get away with perversion. It's just not going to happen. Verse 35, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. 36, for the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself uh, for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. I don't know. I hope your power isn't gone because your power comes through Christ. Don't give it up. Verse 37, And he shall say, Where are their gods? Well, where's the, where's the little religion they teach? Where, who, who's going to fly them away? Tell me again. Their rock in whom they trusted. Let, let him heal you. Let him help you. 
you're crying out here and praying and you, you never crack the Bible and you don't understand the song of Moses, nor do you understand God's word. He said, hey, if you're being that foolish with your traditions, let them help you. Don't ask me. 38. Which did, this is your shepherds and preachers, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. I tell you, if that's all you got, you're in a heap of trouble. I just wish my prayers could be answered. Well, are you doing it God's way? Or are you listening to some dude? I don't know. Now, um, I, again, I, I know sometimes I offend. I, had, I received a letter yesterday, and a person said he goes to church, and he said he listens to this broadcast, and he's learned more here than he really did at his church, I suppose. And... He asked his preacher, he said, do you ever listen to that shepherd's chapel? And the preacher said, oh, yes, I, I have. He said, he offends me. He really turned me off. Well, that should tell you something. I don't offend pastors that stick with this word. I only offend those that rip off the people that are biblically illiterate, basically claiming to have credentials. Let's see them get with it. Let's see them translate the scriptures for you and unfold the word of God with the blessings of God. Then we'll say, hey, there's a pastor, 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. I, in other words, meaning I produce, I don't play act. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. If I decide to deliver you the deadly wound, friend, you've had it. Why? As it is written in the 11th chapter of Matthew, don't fear those that can kill your flesh body, but rather fear he who can cause your soul to perish, to go into perdition as he did the son of perdition. Verse 40. For I lift up mine hand to heaven. And I say, I live forever. You can't get around him. Time means nothing to him. If you think Satan's going to help you, forget it. In other words, when God swears by himself and his throne, you can, you, that's it. 41. If I whet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. 42, I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning, that means the head leaders, head honchos of revenges upon the enemy. I'll take them first, how perverted some of our head leaders are now and some of Congress that even signs off on it. Perversion in the military and everywhere else against God's word. And you expect this nation to be blessed forever? Well, thank God he does love us. Now, again, what is this glittering sword that God uses? Again, you're going to read of it in Revelation chapter 1, verse 16. It is the sword, the tongue of Christ the living word, the word of God. The word of God draws blood. That's why the real truth being taught offends some pastors. Then so be it, let it draw blood. But it'll heal over a lot smoother and they'll be stronger for it. You can be bold in the word of God when you've done your homework and when God is with you. Let the song be sung, and let the truth fall where it may, and let the chips of healing, as that sword will be bloody, because there's so many untruths taught that it's time truth was brought forward. That is simply, well, are you saying Oral Murray's word is truth? No, God's word is truth, and that's what we teach. Verse 43, rejoice, O ye nations, with his people for the will for he will avenge the blood of his servants 
and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. God is always merciful. What does that mean? He's a God of vengeance and he's going to cut and slice. But if you're his people, you don't have to worry. Well, how do I be one of his people? Stay in his word. Watch the ifs, which are conditions to his promises. Be pleasing to God. Let him know you love him. He's in control. He gives life and he gives death. What's your choice? It's yours to decide. That concludes the Song of Moses. It is information that you must obtain to be singing that same song at the end when we have the victory over the tongue of Satan, over the lies of Satan, and are resting in the truth of Jesus Christ when the war is over. I speak of the spiritual war of these end times. How are you doing, friend? I, that's being the song of Moses. I hope you enjoyed it. Whether it stung or whether it was received in love, it is God's word. That is how it is. That is that, or which is to say, amen.